In the last episode we looked at mixing paints from the three primary colours. Today we're going to be using white paint to create tints. By the end of the video you'll have all the information you need to mix some very precise tints of colours. In this first section we're going to use white paint to create some tints of orange. Ok, I know what you're thinking, I don't need this, it is easy peasy lemon squeezy. But without these skills that I'm going to show you in this video, I wouldn't have been able to do this painting. As I painted this image, I worked gradually from those light tones in the background, getting gradually darker and darker and darker until I hit the blacks at the front. A pretty tricky tonal exercise, and without using these skills there's definitely no way that I'd have painted this one. Here I was only using a narrow part of the full tonal range, going from white to a mid grey. So as you can guess, to put in this amount of depth into a painting is pretty difficult and you've got to have some really accurate colour mixing to do it. So I hope now you can see the value in doing these exercises that we're going to do today. Ok, to do this then, let's start up from the very basic. So first of all I'm taking some red blobbing a bit of that onto my paper and then I'm going to create a tint of the red by adding a little bit of white into it and as you can see we get quite a dark pink. Another bit of white and we get a lovely pale pastel pink. Now to really ratchet up the difficulty level, ok I'm joking, we're going to mix a bit of orange, put a blob of that on and then we'll create a tint of orange by again adding a bit of white into it. And then a bit more white, we'll make it light here again. So we can do exactly the same thing with the secondary colours. So far, pretty easy stuff. Now we're going to get on to the main challenge. If you look at the top row of boxes, there's 18 little boxes there in a row. And we're going to fill those with colours getting gradually darker as we go along. The exact number doesn't really matter, but I've just chosen 18 because it fit nicely onto my paper. I've painted in the first box just pure white, and then I'm going to just add the tiniest tiniest amount of orange into there to create the next darker tone going along. I'm doing it this way but you can reverse it and go the opposite way and start with orange and gradually add white to make it lighter and lighter but you do have to be careful about one thing and I'll come back to that later. So now I've got two boxes filled in and again I'm just going to add a tiny tiny little bit of orange to it now that one doesn't look quite dark enough, so I'm going to add a little bit more orange in there, again just a tiny amount, and then we'll see what this looks like when I put it onto the paper. Yeah that's better. So again for the next one, a bit more orange, and I'm starting to now be able to put in more orange, it's just right at the very start you just want to be putting in the tiniest amounts, then as you go on you can add more and more and it'll take it, the white won't affect it as much. As you can see there, nice big blob. And I think I've overdone that a little bit, so let's put a bit of white back in there. The point of this exercise is to gradually get darker as you go along. And so I'm going to have white on the left hand side, and then get to that pure orange by the right hand side. The trick with this when you get up to the dark oranges is that you don't mix in your orange into all of the paint that you've previously mixed. You'll just put a little bit of orange into a little bit of it so you're not getting as much white and that allows you to get that nice saturated orange tone by the end. And here we go, for the last one I'm just using the pure orange that I started with at the beginning. So we've gone from white to pure orange in 18 steps. And remember you can do this the other way around as well, going from orange to pure white, but the thing to remember is that as you go along it will get very hard to make it lighter and you're going to have to add loads and loads of white. So do the same thing again, of just taking off a bit of the colour that you've already mixed, put that on your palette and then add some more white to that. So by the end you'll just be taking a tiniest bit of your colour that you've had previously and then mixing in a fair bit of white to get to that final pure white by the end. For an extra challenge now, what I'm going to try and do is mix a tone that would go exactly between these two. This again is a step up from the previous exercise. What I'm going to do here is imagine that I've left painting for a while, come back to it the next day and I've got to mix a colour that goes in between these two. Starting off with some orange, mixed from the 
two primary colors that I used previously. And then I'm going to start creating the tint by adding in some white. Then I'll do a little test just to see how it's going. Now, one of the tricks with this that you can do is to squint at it and that washes out all the color and you can just see the tone of the color, how dark or how light it is. And that'll help you to judge this better. So that's all I'm doing now is I'm just gradually modifying the color, either adding a little bit of the orange into it or a little bit of the white into it, just to try and get that color that's exactly in between. One thing to bear in mind though is that colors can dry differently. So you might want to just use a hairdryer quick to dry it off and check that you've got the right tone. For extra practice at this, you can just pick another two colors randomly and then try and mix a color that goes in between those. And you can do this as many times as you like. And that's how mine looks after drying it off. This challenge is very similar to the last one, but it is slightly harder. It's a little bit of a step up. First of all, I'm mixing purple, another one of the secondary colors. And then I'm going to create a tint of that purple by adding, again, a tiny, tiny little bit of that purple into there. Again, I'll speed this up because this is the bit you don't really want to see. Now this is where it gets harder. I'm going to actually change the purple that I'm using rather than sticking to the same color. So every single time I paint a new block of color, it's going to be a, a slightly different purple. So now let's add a tiny little bit into the first mix again, just to darken that. And again, you can use the same little trick of squinting at it to make sure that it is gradually getting darker. Right, so now another purple. This time I'm just going to add a tiny bit of red into it. It's not quite changed it enough, so... Oh, that's gone way too far. So let's add a bit more white in just to bring that back a bit and quite a bit more and that's better right so continue doing this mixing different purples you can even add a little bit of the blue into it too and then carry on every time changing your purple and gradually getting darker and darker squinting at it to make sure it is getting darker and then finally at the very end I'm going to mix the darkest purple I can using just a touch of red there you can see that's really dark and once I've done that I can go back and lighten it to get the previous two steps and this is what it looks like same deal here just mix a colour in between these two you should end up with something like this now there is a way, if you've got access to Photoshop or some other photo editing software, to be able to check your work. If you take a photo of what you've done and put that into your photo editing software, then convert it to black and white, you should be able to see it getting gradually darker. Now I've got problems round here, but I think I just needed to put on more layers of the orange. But apart from that, it's not looking too bad. In this second episode, we've learned that we can mix tints of the primary colors and also the secondary colors. And we've also learned how to mix precise tones by squinting at what we're painting. Now let's see what exciting things I've got lined up for the next episode. Okay, I'll admit it, browns don't sound the most interesting of things, but once you can mix really good browns, that lets you go into mixing really interesting greys and neutral colours, which is where the real fun starts. And I'm still not selling it, am I? Anyway, go with it, and by the end you will become a colour mixing master. If you've got any comments or questions about what I've done today, then just leave me a comment in the box below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to be informed of my other videos as they come out, then there's a handy little subscribe button in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So thank you very much for watching. I'm David Denton, and you've been watching David Denton Art.
you'd like to watch some of these colour mixing skills in action, click on one of these lovely little videos. And if you'd like to subscribe, click on that creepy looking tree in the middle. See you next time.